exhausted. <laughs> this, this was a, a difficult prep um, playing against a team like Central Michigan, who is the top in the conference. They are extremely talented uh, starting unit. They have unbelievably talented kids off the bench that have been starters in, in the past. And I was ecstatic with our effort today. Uh, we have been practicing the past two days at a different effort level than we had in the past week. And we responded today. Uh, I thought the crowd did a great job of carrying us. Uh, and it became a little bit of a, once we got rolling, uh, it went from a, a mini snowball to a little bit of an avalanche with how well we shot the three today, uh, making 10, 10 out of 18. But don't be fooled. Central Michigan is, in my opinion, still an unbelievable team. Uh, they have a chance to, to win out and, and go to the NCAA tournament and, and make a lot of noise in that. They are, uh, they have a lot of different weapons. So I'm happy with the win today. Uh, but honestly, what got us to this point were the past two days of practice. And our kids responded after an emotional loss against Akron at Akron. And there was only one way to respond, in my opinion, and that was the way they played today. Uh, they played with a much more passionate level uh, on every possession. And you have to do that to, to win against a team, team like Central. When you're going through your mind and prepping for this game, did you ever have envisioned it would turn out like this, with the score the way it was? No. <laughs> the, like I said, th this is a team, they have the fifth hardest schedule in the nation. And that they have built themselves up into a chance to get an at-large bid with how tough their schedule's been. I mean, they beat Texas, they beat Green Bay. Um, they, they've just made a, a lot of noise in the non-conference and, and have hit their groove in conference season. Um, but it was a little bit of a perfect storm, uh, the fact that we played so poorly at, at Akron. And for stretches, I should say, for the first four minutes of each half, I thought we played extremely well. Uh, but it was, I can't emphasize it has been a very good two days of practice for this game leading up to that. If we don't have those two days of practice, it were, it, the result would have been completely different today. You, oh. you kind of mentioned that part of the difference in those last two days was there was more passion. Would you talk a little more about what was different about those last two days of practice? Practice was very intense. Uh, practice was very physical. Uh, it was extremely competitive. Uh, there was a lot of colorful language. And we were able to get the most out of each other when we competed against each other or when we competed against the men's practice squad. Will you talk a little bit about the, the huge offensive second half, but it was coming off the end of the first half where you guys struggled so much offensively. Would you talk first a little bit about the, like, the last six, seven minutes struggles offensively and then what got fixed in the second half? Central Michigan switched our ball screens. Uh, they went to a non-traditional lineup. They were much bigger than we were in the guard positions for the last probably five minutes of that half. Uh, we tried to get some post-ups when they did switch and have either Danielle Habel or Alexis Rogers uh, switch and try and post up a Jules Olive and we were unable to win that mismatch battle on the inside. Um, she made a change, decided to go big. They switched earlier. We couldn't turn the corner or draw a foul when they switched. And we honestly str struggled to get any sort of penetration. So there, Bigger lineup gave us a lot of, lot of trouble. Um, we made an adjustment in, in the second half to look to slip a lot more screens. Uh, we did try uh, another offensive series where we set fewer ball screens in that particular series. Uh, that seemed to help. Uh, I will say they went to zone and we were able to connect on a, on a lot of shots um, against their, their zone and that was a big turning point. I mean, Katrina Salinas came off the bench uh, hit two big ones. Bailey Cameron Duff came off the bench, hit four. I mean, th those two kids go six of six uh, all in the 
second half, or excuse me, five out of those six from the second half, and that was a fantastic spark. Um, the crowd just w it hit another decimal level when those kids hit, hit the big shots against their zone, and then they had to make a change again and go uh, man, man to man after that. Considering the, last, the two out of the last three you lost here, how badly did you guys need a win like this? You never want to lose at home anytime you play at home, especially here. I think it's uh, easily a 10 point advantage and it's very difficult to lose here uh, knowing that our schedule was so top heavy with home games in December and January and now it's littered with away games in February. So you have to take care of business. I, that definitely was a rallying cry that there's only four more home games before uh, we competed today. I think the seniors uh, are seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel and realizing that their time is winding down and that has made a big difference as well. Some seniors can look at that light and turn away from it and throw in the towel. Uh, I'm proud of Chrissy Steffen in particular. Uh, stepped up, she, she carried us early on, got us to uh, a nine point lead uh, because of her outside shooting, a couple pull ups, a couple attacks. and. That, that's a kid that wants to go out with a bang, and she's got her 1,000 points already underneath her belt, uh, struggled in a couple games, and now the past two games it has really turned it on for us, and, and it has been a, a big, big spark. How contagious can shooting be when someone makes a shot or someone makes two shots for the rest of the team? It's contagious like H1N1, to be honest with you. Okay. It's, they start feeling it, and the momentum grew, grew and grew, and when you have close to 2,000 people, they were going crazy on every three-point shot that made. So a lot of our threes were deep, and as much as I wanted to get more inside touches and try and go at them and get to the foul line, um, we settled in and started taking them and making them in. So I, we're very fortunate, like I said, Katrina Salinas came off the bench and hit two big threes, and they, they were deep. She was being pressured. Uh, she got called for a turnover. We get an immediate time timeout afterwards, or it was immediate timeout, and I challenge her in that huddle like I hadn't challenged anyone in a long time, except during practice. And she responded with those those, those outside shots, and she stepped up when she needed to. Um, but it, it was a really physical game. With that said, and you know, I know we couldn't get the ball inside as much as I wanted to, so I think we did settle for some shots. But like you said, they, one did um, once one went in, it, it became a little bit of an avalanche effect. Coach, would you just kind of talk a little bit about what the defensive game plan was against them? I mean, it looked like you switched on everybody except Bradford. It looked like whoever had the, the assignment on Bradford was stuck to her. We were going to switch in certain areas of the court, and then we were going to stay and on our kids in other areas of the court. Uh, that became apparent quickly that we just needed to, to dig in and switch. I thought we did a good job at the beginning of being in dribble gaps at the very, about the first 12 minutes of the first half, and then they made a big time run right back into it, cut into our lead, cut it to one, because they were getting layups. Uh, th this is a team, honestly, that can get to the hoop on, on anybody. Uh, we're not the best one-on-one -on -one defenders. We're better at team defense, and they, we, we had to, we, we had to make a lot of stops by switching, and that's something we're not used to as much, um, but, we were very effective with that t today. And, and honestly, I will say that, I mean, as much as we were effective, they missed a lot of shots. So it's six of one, half a dozen other. If they, they miss some shots, or we, we cause that. But uh, I, I was excited that we were able to win the rebound battle in the second half and end up tied. Because this is a team that can shoot it, miss it, and go get it and score in a hurry. Anytime you average over 80 points, uh, they're, they're scoring in a variety of ways best defensive effort of the season? Best defensive effort? Well, uh, still want to play some more games, so we'll see. So, <laughs> see how, how we do. But I will say it was probably the best job communicating at the defensive end uh, all year long. Any other questions? <laughs>